They say it can increase hair growth by 200%. They say it's twice as good as minoxidil. Natural, revolutionary and completely free of side effects. But is Redensil really as good as it sounds? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Dr. Altna Mohata, a board certified dermatologist. And the hot topic of today's discussion is Redensil versus Minoxidil. Which one of the two should you be using for your hair loss and why? Now first, let's talk about Redensil. It's a plant-derived compound obtained from large tree and green tea. The two key components of Redensil are DHQG and EGCG2. Redensil works by stimulating or waking up your dormant hair follicles. It promotes fibroblast proliferation in the dermal papilla, which is the very foundation of your hair follicle. It stimulates the stem cells surrounding the hair follicles, which are critical for hair regeneration. This compound can also reduce the inflammation associated with hair loss. All of these properties make Redensil a very promising candidate for early stages of hair loss. However, there is very limited research to confirm whether any of these benefits truly translate into hair growth in a clinical setting. Minoxidil, on the other hand, is a vasodilator, which means it increases the blood flow to your scalp. More blood flow means more oxygen and more nutrients to the hair follicle. This leads to extension of the growth phase or the anagen phase of your hair cycle. Unlike Redensil, which is a relatively new compound, Minoxidil has been around for more than 30 years. It's been used by millions and often considered the gold standard for treatment of various forms of hair loss, including androgenetic alopecia. But Redensil is newer, shinier and has some really bold claims behind it. There is this internal report from a company, it's not peer-reviewed by the way. They found that areas treated with Redensil had a 214% higher hair growth compared to areas which were not treated. The study also found that Redensil performed twice as well as minoxidil for hair growth. Sounds amazing, right? But they actually compared Redensil to just 1% minoxidil, not the standard 5% which we use in everyday practice. Although the sample size was really small to make any good conclusions. Another study, this one is peer reviewed, did not directly compare Redensil versus Minoxidil. They actually used a combination of Redensil, Capixil and Procapil and compared it against 5% Minoxidil. Although they found that the combination outperformed Minoxidil, the sample size was quite small. So until now, Redensil is the new kid in the blog and there is still a lot of research needed to prove that it can actually work as well as Minoxidil. As far as side effects are concerned, the most common side effects with minoxidil are scalp itching, irritation and dryness. During the initial 3-4 to four weeks of treatment, some patients may also experience an increase in hair loss. You might have also heard that the results of minoxidil usually last just as long as it is being used. If you stop minoxidil, your hair will gradually go back to the pre-treatment stage of hair loss within the next 3-6 to six months. Redensil, on the other hand, is believed to not have any side effects, which is actually true for now. Users don't report any kind of irritation or itching in most cases. But until now, there is no evidence to prove that Redensil doesn't cause rebound hair loss, just like minoxidil. Also, Redensil hasn't been around for long enough for us to know its long-term side effects. Then why is Redensil marketed so much more heavily than minoxidil? So Redensil and its contemporaries like Capixil, Procapil and Bicapil are actually available over the counter. This means that companies can market them heavily. They can be given to influencers and sold to you as these miracle solutions for hair loss. Minoxidil on the other hand is a prescription strength drug usually available just with a doctor's prescription in most countries including India. However, in some Western countries, including the United States, up to 5% concentration of minoxidil is available over the counter. And prescription strength treatments can't be marketed the same way as over the counter ones. Well, this doesn't necessarily mean that Redensil is a bad compound. It just means that you have to be a smart consumer and know what's best for you. So which one of the two should you choose? Well, if you want a time-tested and proven treatment for your hair loss, go for minoxidil because it's still the gold standard treatment. It is especially great for treatment of hereditary hair loss, also known as androgenetic alopecia. But if minoxidil doesn't suit you, maybe if you have any side effects, maybe it's contraindicated for you, or maybe you just don't like the feel of minoxidil, then for initial stages of hair loss, you can use Redensil. But remember that consistency is key for treatment of hair loss, be it Redensil, be it Minoxidil, be it any other treatment. It'll take at least three to six months for you to start seeing effects. Hair growth takes time, patience and proper guidance. So always seek the advice of your dermatologist before starting any such treatment. 
So that's it from my side. I hope you found this video useful. I have also written an in-depth article about these two hair loss solutions. You can find the link to that article in the description section of this video. With that, this is Dr. Alpna signing off.